to Stan the Y Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. We are going to Abruzzo in Italy. A lot of people love Italian wines. We had an Italian wine tasting, and, and it was really popular. The dude, uh, Sam Katz, he's a wine educator for Winebow. Uh, he came and he did a fantastic job, very enthusiastic, very passionate about Italian wines. And everybody loved him and we tasted some great Italian wines. And when you get into the fall weather, or in this case it's like winter, because it's already been snow, we've been snowed upon a couple of times, kind of crazy this early in the year, um, people start hedging towards Italian wines. They kind of I don't sell as many Italian wines in the summer as I do in the winter, except for some of the whites, of course. And uh, we're going to go particularly to Abruzzo, which is just uh, north of, um, northeast of uh, Rome. Uh, really cool region. A lot of great wines come out of there. A lot of great values come out of Abruzzo. And uh, so uh, Marche is uh, closer to the Adriatic Sea than Abruzzo, but still some great wines. In particular, Montepulciano comes out of Abruzzo. And it'll say Montepulciano di Abruzzo is the a region it comes from. And not to be confused with Vino Noble di Montepulciano, I think I mentioned this before, which is up in Tuscany. As, uh, it's in the town of Montepulciano. Um, cool place. Cool place. Cool town, really. I've been there. Very, a lot of traffic, kind of crazy. They have a really big cathedral there that was not finished. Kind of cool to see all that. Anyway, Vino Noble di Montepulciano is 100% Sangiovese, a particular clone grown in that region. This is Montepulciano di Abruzzo, the grape is Montepulciano. And so, just go there. And then we're going to try a wine that I have never tried. And I've been in the wine world a long time, and I recently got to try one, and I'm excited to, to share this with you. It is a um, Pecorino, is the name of the grape, uh, Terra de Chieti. Um, Pecorino Caradicchietti from Citra. It's Nero is the name of the wine from Citra. More, many of us are familiar with Citra. Citra does a, a jug wine called Montepulciano di Abruzzo. They do a uh, Trebbiano, that sort of thing. But this is a uh, Citra Pecorino di Chieti from Nero. Well, Nero is the name of their label, excuse me. Uh, 2016. This rolls in at $16.00. So I want to share this one with you because I, I think I was so excited about this wine. I never tried a Pecorino. I've tried the cheese called Pecorino, which I love, by the way. If you've never tried a Pecorino, you should. Especially when you do pasta and melted Pecorino. Oh, God. Unbelievable. Well, let's see what we get on the nose. Excited about this? A little bit of uh, a lemon and lime action. A little like wet stone. Might be a little colder than I want to, but I, um, I went on a little bit of a, a rant last episode. I try to taste the whites at the temperature I think you're going to be tasting them. Now I've I've heard critics in the past, or different guys that have had wine shows, uh, talk about doing whites at room temperature. That's fantastic. I'm glad to do it. Knock yourself out. I understand why, because the wines express themselves a little better at room temperature. But guess what? I, I would say nine times out of ten a person drinks a white wine, probably around 45 degrees. They do. What, what can we say? And, um, in fact, if you want to make a comment, I'd like to get some comments going on my videos. That'd be very exciting. So if you're watching this, and just, you know, take a few minutes, make a comment. Do you ever drink your whites at room temperature? I just want to know. Am I going the wrong direction? Would you like to see me uh, review them at room temperature? Or would you do, do you agree with me right at this point? I can change. I'm capable of changing. Dice king, baby. I love crabs, by the way. Um... I'm willing to change. If you think I should taste them at room temperature, I will. But I'm doing this for you guys. I want you to get what you're getting on the wine. 
And the only way you're going to do that is if I drink it at the same temperature you do. This is rolling at about 46 degrees right now. 47. Maybe 48. Let's. Ah, a little banana coming through on the nose. Let's see what we get on the palate. Love this wine. Love it. I love it. Kind of round, but fresh. You get a little round, like fig component, banana component coming through with a little bit of a, a peach element hitting off. A little bit of minerality. Well, more minerality than you get out of a lot of wines. And I get a little white pepper component coming through on, on the palate. Yeah, very tropical but at the same time fresh and alive on the palate with a little minerality, a little white pepper. I love this wine. I really do. Don't have it in my wine department yet, but I will be getting it in. Good acidity, but it's very well balanced with the fruit flavors. Um, I like the roundness, but fresh at the same time, if you're kind of following me on that one. I like the white pepper on the back side. Um, this might fit in with a turkey dinner, which we, we're all thinking about right now, going into Thanksgiving. Might fit in with that, but I wouldn't have no trouble doing this with shellfish, oysters, clams, mussels, things like that. Have no problem. Be good with halibut. I would have it with halibut. Um, it's fresh, but it's not linear on the acidity side, so you don't get that like mouth puckering feel. There's enough fruit there, enough tropical fruits coming through. Good balance, good structure, uh, well put together wine. I'm liking it a lot. Even get a touch of grass. You know what? I'm going to go straight up. A minus on that wine. I think it's superb. It's $16. It's a good play. I think you should look for it. Hopefully you can find it. It's made by Citra. So they're a big producer in Italy. This is obviously their upper tier wines. Like it a lot. I'm going to go A minus. Let's move on. This is the Citra Multipulciano di Abruzzo Nero. Again, that's the name of their label. 2015. And this also rolls in at $16, uh, 13.5 alcohol. Multiple Chianos is a great, I mean, let's talk about great values out of Italy. They just don't demand a lot of money. It's hard to find an expensive Multiple Chiano from Abruzzo. Now, I don't know if you notice this. Let me give you another. This has a little cool necker. I left it on. What do you think about that kind of thing? Look at that little, little gizmo on there. Now, it doesn't serve any purpose, I don't think, but, you know, do you think that's just a marketing ploy? Or do you think that brings some value to it? I, I think it's kind of cool, um, but I'm not sure if it means anything. It is a cool touch. Depends on how the wine is, right? Who cares what they put on it? It's, I know a lot of people don't like those little neckers that have to score on them and all that sort of thing. I think it kind of irritates people. I would agree with that. I pull most of those off. Uh, let's see what we get on the nose. It's very perfumed. A lot of violets coming through on the nose, which I find quite interesting. Yeah, a little bit of carnation and violets. Like I just stuck my nose in a bunch of those. That's really cool. I like that a lot. I'm getting a little plum. Like boysenberry plum sort of action coming through. Almost has a meaty component on the nose, which is quite interesting. Let's see what we get on the palate. Boy, the, the floral part of that is just amazing. <clears throat> I like it. Let's move on. Let's move on. No, let's taste the wine. Come on now.
talk about structure. I get um, leather, tobacco, uh, a, a, like a black plum element, a little bit of a black boysenberry coming through, but it is really wrapped up tightly in the structure of the tobacco and the leather and a little bit of earthiness to it and almost meaty, almost meaty like you'd get in uh, Cote Roti or Hermitage or one of those, you know, St. Joseph meaty, but not quite, not there, but it's hedging that way. And a lot of spice action on the back side of this wine. That's a solid wine, solid wine. A little bit of muscle, but not, but very approachable. It could age. I, I wouldn't be surprised if this gets much better in three to four years. Um, $16. I'm gonna put it right up there with the, um, the Pecorino. I'm gonna go A minus on that wine. I think it's got a lot going on for the money. I actually have it at the store. And I think I've told you guys this before. This is not a... This is, I'm not doing these episodes to sell wine at the store, but I know some of you guys come to the store to, uh, to see if I have these wines. And I told you I would tell you that if I do, and I do have this wine right here. White affected it at all. No, definitely an A minus wine for the money. Let's move on. Now, I've had this bottle sitting around for a while. Uh, my apologies to the uh, company that sent it to me to review. Um, I'm finally getting to it, so I hope, I hope you're not giving up on me yet. This is the, uh, the word, and I'm breaking away from Citra. We're going to the um, Casal Thulero. Theo, Multipulciano di Abruzzo, 2009, and this rolls in at $18. I know that might be considered expensive for a Multipulciano di Abruzzo, but I'm very, very excited to try this one. I've had it around for a while. I've been very patiently, you know, I moved, <laughs> moved this one to this, my new place here. Once again, the Casal. Thalero, Thalero, Multiple Chiano di Abruzzo, Theo, $18. Let's see what we get on the nose. I'm excited about this. I have this one. Almost like a mushroom component coming through. This one also has a little bit of a floral component, but more like a soap floral component, like one of those soap, fancy soaps you might buy that has those smells to it. I get tobacco, definitely a kind of a boysenberry tobacco, uh, leather, mushroom, floral component coming through. Very interesting on the nose. Let's see what we get on the palate. Floral notes, the red flowers come through big time on the back side of this one, but I love the, the weight in the mouth. Again, a little bit on the meaty side. I get tobacco, I get boysenberry, I get a little bit of plum action, but the red flowers dominate, and uh, some very interesting barbecue spices that kind of hit on the back of the mint palate into the finish, and where it lifts a little bit, it's a little crunchy on the finish, which I find quite interesting. Has that kind of gripping minerality on the end. What I like about this wine a lot, now this is what I like as a wine guy when I'm introducing people to old world wines, this has enough fruit to satisfy 
the palates of people that are used to those kind of new world fruit action, but at the same time it has some minerality, it has that tobacco, it has that leather, it has that earthiness, has a little bit of mushroom component that a lot of people would not get out of it. I'm not saying you're going to get mushroom, but I actually taste mushroom, like somebody diced the mushrooms into my boysenberries and my plums, kind of mixed it up a little bit. It uh, has it there. I like that component of this wine. This is a solid Montepulciano di Abruzzo. Um, I like it a lot. I like it. Good structure, good balance. This also, well, it's a 2000 and what did I say? 2009, folks. Nine. So, that's, yeah, eight years on it. And it, I, it definitely go five more. I, I'm just saying. I like this one. And then the red flowers, that crunchy element that comes through on the backside. I like that a lot. The tannins get a little bit sweet on the mid palate. I'm going to go AA plus on that wine. Solid wine. I'm hoping I get my hands on some. I'm going to start doing some research on this wine because I don't have it. Somebody sent it to me in the mail. Thank you very much, by the way. Thank you for doing that. And thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day to watch me. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.